Story 2 by Joshua Gen 2005 Presents Yet Another Bible Study Looking Into the Existence of God. Does God Exist? All Bible Scripture quotations are from the King James Bible of 1611 AD the Authorized Version. Leaving aside the Bible, let's say that you come across a book that contains many predictions and these predictions come to pass exactly as written. Though they were predicted, the person who predicted them is already dead for hundreds of years. What will be the outcome of such a book if, you and I happen to read it? How would you assess these predictions becoming history? How would you describe or explain such predictions? The first thing that will come to your mind will be, they did not come to a man naturally but by supernatural means. What is a supernatural revelation? 1. God's prophets giving prophecy. This will happen exactly as predicted in the letter. 2. Evil spirits revealing what they are going to do in the future to someone, a family, a community or a country. Unless you turn to God for help and start believing Jesus, those predictions will happen but not exactly. Most of the time, the predictions will be there but what will happen is not exactly as mentioned in the prediction. Today people love to know about their future and this enthusiasm takes them to many people, soothsayers which means, seers, prophesier, forecaster or fortune teller. They want to know about their future and, fortune telling has become a billion dollar business in the USA. Why? Because people have the uncertainty of their future. Take notice of this scripture from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21 and verse. 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. These are the words from Jesus Christ. It says humans will fear about their future as they observe the things that are taking place in this world. This is the very reason people consult fortune tellers and mediums. There are many fortune tellers and astrologers in the world which some are very popular. But do they predict right? If you study predictions, we could list at least 30 of such ways people predict the future. I know of a man who believed in such a prediction that, he is going through a bad time for the next four years and the fortune teller advised him not to leave the house even for four years and stay at home which he did. During this time, his wife had to provide for him and the family and was going through a lot of hardships as the breadwinner of the family is in danger in accordance with the prediction. Four long years passed, and the good times came back and within six months into good times, he was sentenced to jail for 18 months for a bogus deed he was involved in. Do you think he had a good time in prison as if the predictions were true, he should have. There are many ways that predictions could come and they are listed below. 1. Aromancy is divination from the state of the air or from atmospheric substances. 2. Aeromancy is divination by means of flower. 3. Anthropomancy is divination from the entrails of a human being. 4. Astragalomancy is divination by means of small bones or dice. 5. Axinomancy is, divination by means of the movements of an axe placed on a post. 6. Bellomancy is, divination by drawing arrows at random from a container. 7. Bibliomancy is, divination by books, especially the Bible. 8. Cartomancy is, fortune telling by means of playing cards. 9. Catoptromancy is, divination by a mirror or by crystal gazing. 10. Ceramancy is, divination from figures formed by melted wax in water. 11. Chiromancy is, divination by examination of the hand. 12. Claromancy is, divination by means of casting lots. 13. Dactyliomancy is, divination by means of finger rings. 14. Geomancy is, divination by means of figures or lines or geographic features. 15. Gyromancy is, Divination in which one walking in or around a circle falls from dizziness and prognosticates from the place of the fall. 16. Hydromancy is, divination by water or other liquid, as by vision seen therein or the ebb and flow of tides. 17. Lacanomancy is, divination by inspection of water in a basin. 18. Lithomancy is, divination by stones or by charms or talismans of stone. 19. Necromancy is, Conjuration, see Conjure 2a, of the spirits of the dead for purposes of magically revealing the future or influencing the course of events. 20. One Iromancy is, divination by means of dreams. 21. Onomancy is, divination from the letters of a name. 22. Oomancy is, divination by means of eggs. 23. Ornithomancy is, 
divination by observation of the flight of birds. 24. Filamency is, divination by means of leaves. 25. Sphomancy is, divination by pebbles. 26. Pyromancy is, divination by means of fire or flames. 27. Rhabdomancy is, divination by rods or wands. 28. Spatulomancy is, divination by means of an animal's shoulder blade. 29. Theomancy is, divination by the responses of oracles supposed to be divinely inspired. 30. Xylomancy is, divination by means of pieces of wood. The problem is after consulting all experts in these fields, still half of it is untrue. Why, let us read from the Bible a passage that God speaks about such people. Book of Isaiah chapter 44 and from verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. 25. That frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. 26. That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Let's break down this passage. 1. God claims that he is the Redeemer. 2. God made you in your mother's womb. 3. God makes all things. 4. God stretched the sky and placed all planets and stars in it the correct orbit. 5. God spread the earth according to his plan and wishes. Separating water from land, mountains, and the depths. 6. The people who predict and try to add points to their names or want to be famous will be frustrated as their predictions will be proven to be false. 7. The diviners will go mad or crazy. 8. They say they are wise but when the predictions do not come to pass, they have to go back to their drawing boards and start all over again. Simply they become zero. Nine. They will be looked upon as fools and people will see them as jokers. 10. God will confirm the word of his servant and perform the messenger's message he sent through them. 11. At a time Jerusalem was uninhabited and the cities of Judah were in ruins, God says he will rebuild and refurbish the decayed places. What an astonishing 11 prophecies and 3 Bible verses. Some of them have come to pass and some of them are still taking place every day of our lives and will run as it is until Christ returns. I know a fascinating story about a president of a country who believed in astrology and fortune telling. The president was into his second term as president of this country and heavily involved in consulting diviners. Two years before finishing his term as the diviners predicted he called for a presidential election and lost it to one of his juniors. Dear friend compares this story with the above verses and see how God tells the truth and how the best astrologers of a country become a laughing stock and how a president of that country fortifying his throne for a lie from the demons. When did people started these predictions and counting the placement of the planets and determine how they will affect a person? Here I quote from the extra-biblical text also called Apocryphal Literature, two chapters from the Book of Enoch. Chapter 7 1. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms. 2. And enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they 3. Became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed. 4. All the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against. 5. Them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds, and beasts, and reptiles, and 6. Fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Chapter 8, 1. And Azazel taught men to make swords, and knives, and shields, and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them, and bracelets, and ornaments, and the use of antimony, and the beautifying of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones, and all too. Coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they three were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Semiza taught enchantments, and root minus cuttings, Armoros the resolving of enchantments, Barakijal, taught, astrology, Kokabel the constellations, Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds, 
Arachiel the signs of the earth, Shamsiel the signs of the sun, and Sariel the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. If you read carefully the above scripture, you will notice who taught all this nonsense to humans. These are angels who are also called the watchers who drank blood and became human-like and, who went into human women and who produced the giants or the Nephilim. I could make another video on these two chapters and if you read carefully you will understand many things out of these verses. Everything they taught was disgusting to God and that is why he sent the great flood to wash them all away. We see God did not like it as Isaiah says above and anyone who practices this will be brought back to zero. God is the creator of everything and he is in total control of what he says in the Bible and will make sure all that he has said or predicted through his servants the prophets will be fulfilled to the last letter. Is my God is the true God? To prove this, there are many prophecies but I have chosen a very special one to start this study series with, which is recorded in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 26 and from verse 1. Why I selected this for a start. God gave the prophecy and normal people who are into media and history writing recorded this series of events which proves what God said came to pass. Let us read first. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 26 and from verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. 2. Son of man, because that Tyrus hath said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken that was the gates of the people she is turned unto me, I shall be replenished, now she is laid waste. 3. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causeth his waves to come up. 4. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus, and break down her towers, I will also scrape her dust from her, and make her like the top of a rock. 5. It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations. 6. And her daughters which are in the field shall be slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. 7. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, a king of kings, from the north, with horses, and with chariots, and with horsemen, and companies, and much people. 8. He shall slay with the sword thy daughters in the field, and he shall make a fort against thee, and cast a mount against thee, and lift up the buckler against thee. 9. And he shall set engines of war against thy walls, and with his axes he shall break down thy towers. 10. By reason of the abundance of his horses their dust shall cover thee, thy walls shall shake at the noise of the horsemen, and of the wheels, and of the chariots, when he shall enter into thy gates, as men enter into a city wherein is made a breach. 11. With the hoofs of his horses shall he tread down all thy streets, he shall slay thy people by the sword, and thy strong garrisons shall go down to the ground. 12. And they shall make a spoil of thy riches, and make a prey of thy merchandise, and they shall break down thy walls, and destroy thy pleasant houses, and they shall lay thy stones and thy timber and thy dust in the midst of the water. 13. And I will cause the noise of thy songs to cease, and the sound of thy harps shall be no more heard. 14. And I will make thee like the top of a rock, thou shalt be a place to spread nets upon, thou shalt be built no more, for I the Lord have spoken it, saith the Lord God. In the modern days people who are unaware or do not believe in prophecy will call it predictions. This I would call a bunch of predictions. Why I say this is a bunch is, you will find many predictions to come to pass for it to be fulfilled. Let's examine them. Prophet Ezekiel prophesied in 597 BC and he records the date of revelation and he emphasizes it came from God Almighty. When he says that the word of the Lord came to him, he means, God Almighty put those words into his mouth and spoke. Let us see the predictions and why this came to Tyrus is also written. Israel is God's chosen people in the apple of his eye. To complete what God promised Abraham, God had to do bring many things into a pass to fulfill what he promised. Now there comes a situation where the people of Lebanon or rather Tyres, a part of Lebanon which had high walls as security and also Tyrus the island just one kilometer away to protect the elite if they are threatened by the enemy. Let's take these predictions one by one. 1. Tyrus will be replenished as it will be laid waste. For this prediction to come true, first Tyrus should be laid to waste as it was a very rich city and people were very rich as the city was surrounded by high walls for protection. History records that Tyrus was laid to waste and now it is replenished. 2. 
God will cause many nations to come against Tyrus as the sea comes up with waves, which means, no time to run to safety, which happened exactly. 3. The walls of Tyrus will be destroyed. This happened exactly. 4. Break down her towers means the security towers of the island. 5. Scrape even the dust upon the rock of the island which had buildings, palaces, etc. In other words, only the rock of that island will stay and nothing else. 6. It shall be a place to dry the fishing nets and nothing more as people have plundered the splendor of it. 7. The daughters will be slain. 8. King Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon will come against it. He names the king who will come against Tyrus among many nations predicted. Shall make a fort against thee, and cast a mount against thee, and lift up the buckler against thee. 9. He shall set engines of war against thy walls, and with his axes, he shall break down thy towers. 10. His many horses will blur the vision of the city with dust. The walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen. 11. He shall slay thy people by the sword, and thy strong garrisons shall go down to the ground. 12. And they shall make a spoil of thy riches, and make a prey of thy merchandise. 13. They shall break down thy walls, and destroy thy pleasant houses, and they shall lay thy stones and thy timber and thy dust in the midst of the water. 14. The joy of the city will be gone as no more songs are heard there. No more harps are being played there. 15. The island will be only a rock for fishermen to lay and dry their nets and it will never be built again. When we read this whole passage for all these predictions to come true to the letter do you see that there has to be a divine hand behind it as prophet Ezekiel says that God revealed. Therefore definitely it has to be God. What are the odds for this bunch of prophecies to become true? I do not think anybody could give us a calculated odds rate on this because the figure is an infinity. As prophesied King Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Tyrus the land and everything on it but the elite found security in the Tyrus island. Nebuchadnezzar didn't go further to destroy the island and withdrew his forces. In 330 BC Alexander the Great came against Tyrus again and destroyed the land Tyrus as well as the island totally and wiped all building material, including wood to the sea and made only the rock face bare in the island. Surprisingly even today this island is only used to dry out fishnets. Now prophet Ezekiel was spoken by God in 597 BC but this prophecy came to pass in 330 BC a few hundred years after Ezekiel went to paradise to be with the Lord. The Bible does not record the outcome of this prophecy but historians and media of that day did. That is why it is very significant as proof for these predictions came from non-believers. Therefore where do you want to go next when you need to know about your future? My God is the true God as His words do not change nor fulfilled halfway. He will make it happen to the last letter. Find a spirit-filled church to worship and be nourished with God's word and then you don't need to know your future as God will be your future in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching, reading and listening to our stories. Encourage us more to bring super stories. Subscribe to our channel and push the bell icon so you may know when we upload our next story instantly.